Insights with Hanley Barnard, an innovative platform with mentors and great ideas. Listen to us on SoundCloud and Spotify. Click the links below. Subscribe to our channel. Welcome to Insights with Hanley Barnard, and I'm very, very overwhelmed and excited to have Hein Britton Kamp here, who's worked phenomenally in the property industry. Congratulations with that. With a history as a banker, he's managed to find himself at a pinnacle point, I think, looking at the economy of the country and where does that lead or take us in the property market. So welcome and thank, thank you, you so for much, Hanley, and thank you for having me. Yes. I must say thank you for doing the things that you do. Rather remarkable yeah. person in your own right as a leader. He's got to compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> this is no job. It's my job. Is I it part that. of your sales <laughs> degree? Yeah, must be. <laughs> so, on a more serious note, if we're looking at the moment about resilience, we are sitting in a situation where there is load shedding. I mean, for, for people that's not South African, we are sitting in a situation at the moment. And well, I think, well, luckily uh, in Europe as well, there's load shedding. I love at the moment, in Europe. So, so, you can relate. so, I don't think we're that unique anymore. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about us, is we're not that unique. How do you think resilience is playing a part now, rethinking what we're doing? You know, I, I often ask myself that question about resilience. And you know, mm. we've always got that question of people saying they're going to leave South Africa, they leave South Africa. So yes. many people say, I want to leave, I want to go somewhere else. And I often think about that question. Mm. Um, how did our founding fathers see this country when they came here for the first time? I mean, literally uh, hundreds of years ago, and, and all 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 um, um, uh, creeds and traditions and so forth came to this country mm. at some point. But I mean, they saw a land of opportunity, and I sometimes think that uh, we leave so easily um, where there's actually so much resources and opportunities in our country available. Mm that if we get it together, it can be something remarkable. It's one thing going to a, a, a yes. highly advanced country, uh, like say the Americas or Europe, where actually opportunity becomes less, um, if, you, if you think about it. I um, mean, there's less chances of development, less chances of building a business, less chances of building a successful career, and perhaps even competing on a much higher level yes. makes it much more difficult. Mm. So I think South Africa has got a chance, and yeah. I think everybody should understand that, mm. leaving is perhaps not the right option. Yes, it's interesting when you ask people, you know, do you want to leave? A lot of people say yes. But I think what makes it unique is especially for you because you you have your own company sure. and you're a leader in your field. And how do you find it? And what tips can you give us in terms of that? You know, we must always remember that I don't see people living in trains, planes and automobiles in the future. So everybody lives in a house. They, they either rent one or they own one. Mm. Um, so I believe that our industry fundamentally influences just about everybody. Yes. Um, and I think that's something that we sometimes miss as an industry yeah. and as, as people. Uh, I also don't think that we're salespeople anymore. I don't think we sell any longer. Mm. I think we're in the services industry more. I like the fact that um, you say that because a lot of people go, oh, estate agents, and they go, oh, you know, how do you see so. that? <laughs> You kind of go, oh no, not no, another, no, 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 another yeah, estate agent. agent. Um, well, uh, and you don't uh, see the sales. Uh, see uh, we don't knock on doors anymore. <laughs> um, we're not, not traveling salesmen anymore. Mm, mm. I think, I think uh, the, the, the level of professionalism has fundamentally changed in our industry. Um, where we, many, many years ago, you simply wrote a little exam and you became an estate agent. Mm. And it became a career possibly as a second option. Mm. as, a, as a, a second job many times for right. people. I think the level uh, has become so professional mm. um, that um, and, and, it's, and extreme professionals join our industry. I mean, we literally, uh, you, you look at people that study um, law and become right. estate agents, you see teachers and they make some of the best estate agents on mm. the planet um, because they've got the discipline mm. and the skills and the people's knowledge, mm. uh, that it's become a very professional environment. Not only that, it is regulated on such a level at the moment. Uh, the, the Property Practitioners Act was enacted on the 1st of February this year, mm. made it fundamentally um, a very professional environment, mm. one that you have to form, do formal studies and, mm. and write formal exams to be a qualified estate agent. So I think that the, 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 the environment has changed a lot to mm. become a real profession. And, 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 and that's a good thing. I think, I think uh, in the, now, if you, if you find a real good property practitioner, because we're not called real estate agents, we're property, called property practitioners. practitioners. Right. Um, 
if you find a really good one, you know that they're highly qualified individuals yeah. and, and have the ability to handle negotiations in a professional manner mm. and marketing. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating career because it really addresses the ability to love people. You always talk about people. people. Well, it's, it's all about that, isn't it? Because you love what you do. Yeah. Well, um, you just adore this market and you pretty good at it you're known as one of the best property practitioners if i put it that way in the country what about it ticks you what is the fascination with your expertise as a mentor and a leader i think it, it's all about people i mean mm. if you and it's and it's caring for people it's a fundamental core value that you have to have in really caring for uh, individuals um, to make sure these are extremely complex and extremely important transactions that they do mm. that fundamentally would change their lives mm. to the better or the worse. So important. And I think understanding people correctly, having the love for people uh, as a core value mm. uh, makes one in the service industry who you become. Mm. I think it would be very difficult now I, I, was, I had a long career in banking, and people yes. often say you know, bankers are the, oh, well, some of the most difficult people to live with. Huh? <laughs> um, I, I, could, I did learn how to say no very easily. That's very important. Would you no. like some money? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's also a core function that you have to get to know. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's a very important word. My sister says it's an actor. But I mean, even in, this, in that industry, mm. uh, that's changed so much. I mean, in the years that I was a banker, we were real bankers. You know, the bank manager sitting behind a big black desk changed fundamentally to a more retail uh, service oriented industry, um, where to this day, it's now really, if you walk into a bank branch, mm. it's now about service. It's nothing else than that. Mm. Um, um, and I think from, from an early career in banking and then and then my career in origination, origination, if you don't know, is, is effectively home loan brokers, mm. uh, where, we, where they go, where our originator goes and finds you the best home loan mm. with, uh, with the major banks in terms of rate and offering. Um, that was also in the services industry, also a complex industry. Very complex. Um, but I, in, in the end of the day, the real estate industry, uh, the transactions we've been involved with, the people that we're involved mm. with are really complex transactions. Mm. They always ask us, you know, um, do we really need a, a property practitioners or real estate agents? Can't we just buy something on the internet? That's the thing. Um, mm. It's impossible. Um, people are intricate. Humans are all special they've all got their own specific needs and requirements no computer on the planet mm. can do that job and not a single property transaction looks like this the one it looks before. the same it's it interesting that you say it's a it's a service industry and not a products well, industry. it's all about as we sold it a house. and we, we, we're doing a sale but yeah do can you force somebody to buy a house i don't think so no. i think uh, you know our job is to facilitate um to market um, take it to the market, facilitate the, the marketing of the property, uh, present it in a, in a good fashion and manner, um, make sure that we act in the best interests of all parties concerned. I mean, we don't these days only act for the seller, we also have to act in the best interests of, of the buyer. Um, but it's, it's not, we can't force somebody to sell or buy something. Um, yes. It remains that they will make their own minds about yes. it. We are, have got to, though, as, uh, as, as good property practitioners, give advice around the investment, about the future of an area or a town, mm. um, what diverse factors could influence the value of property, um, when is the right time to buy or sell, and that kind of thing. So, so it's, it's complex in that nature because we often have to look at very local markets. We always have to look at macroeconomic uh, mm. factors as well. I mean, mm. um, what we're looking at at the moment, for example, we, you know, I speak to so many people, a year ago, um, the interest rates were at 7%. Now right. we suddenly much, much higher. Mm. A normal home loan could cost you five, six, seven thousand 7,000 rand a month more now. True. Um, C combined with so much inflationary pressure mm. at the moment, um, interest rates keep on rising. Yes. I mean, you can literally not drive to the cafe to buy anything because it costs more to drive than the thing that you're going to buy. Yes, I'm thinking of a bicycle. Um, you know, <laughs> but, 
We might learn a little bit from the Netherlands there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, why? Why not? <laughs> and I think I think it would, in certain areas, not be that safe. Um, but yeah, it could be an option. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I think so. So so so. I mean, at the moment, for example, if you look at my local market here mm. in the Helderberg, mm. I mean, properties are really scarce. Oh. Uh, it's extremely difficult to find a, a rental home, for example. Mm. And if you do, it's exorbitantly expensive. Um, if you look at buying one, um, you know, a normal three bedroom, two bathroom, double garage house mm. is now over three million rand mm. in some stress. It's an astonishing amount of money to pay for so a normal home. So what do we do home. as the audience? What do we do as residents here? Because I think there's a particular unrest and a panic happening at the moment. Not that it hasn't happened before, but I think particularly now people are feeling a you know, kind of a situation, a bit of a freeze, you know, as we as we go ahead into the future. What do you what do you think the I, solution is? Is there a solution or do we just carry on? Well, you know, in my career, I've seen cycles. I mean, we, mm. we, uh, and, and these these major cycles that we that we that we have to go through um, uh, yeah, I, I, my career, I've seen so many of them. But they always change. Mm. Uh, I mean, when we look at inflation factors at the moment, we we, we I mean, uh, food is horribly expensive. Yes. But that's influenced by the fuel price. Yes. Uh, or rather, the diesel price, if mm. I may add. Um, it's one thing bringing the petrol price down, but, but everything that is transported in South Africa is by freight, which is trucks, which uses diesel. Yes. Um, so it's one thing bringing the petrol price down so I can drive to the cafe, but I'm paying five rand a, 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 a more for the bread. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think inflationary pressures change. The only way that the Reserve Bank can control inflation is with interest rates. It's mm. been the only tool that really exists in South African structure as a centralized banking system. Um, it's the only way they can control inflation. Mm. Effectively, if I raise interest rates, I take more money out of your pocket because you're lending money mm. and it means you can buy less stuff and therefore things will then decrease in, in what they get charged for. And so that's, in, that's, that, that's the environment that we, have, that we live in as, mm. as a central banking um, kind of banking system country. And it's not unique to us. I mean, no. if you look at the Fed in America, it does exactly the same mm. thing. If he mm. wants to control inflation, he, lifts, he raises the interest rate. Yes. Um, so, so these cycles don't last. Uh, the, mm. the great thing about it is they're much shorter in lifespan. Um, right. The last 10 not, years. No, it doesn't. I mean, if we look, I mean, yes. the, the harshest one we can remember is the recession. Mm. Um, 2009 to 2000, 2007, 2009 mm. era. Uh, which is horrible. Was I, mean, horrible. I mean, that was that was terrifying. So many people lost their jobs, and so many businesses had to close. Banks weren't, weren't lending money. Mm. Interest rates were at record highs. There's a strong possibility we could go there. I mean, there's there's, there's a real possibility that the mm. world can go into recession. Mm. But I do know that these cycles are much shorter now. They okay. don't have that extensive long kind of years years, thing. Yes. Mm. the world world moves too fast um uh, whilst we've got major countries in the world like china and america and play they don't like not having a good time mm. so they kind of do things that'll influence macroeconomic levels quickly mm. so even if the world goes into a short recession it'll always jump out quickly mm. I don't think we should have to stress too much about it. In the end, mm. if you think about it, what can you do about it? If it's, if what it's, what can you do about it? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's not. Gonna yeah, be, oh my God! It's not so African <laughs> unique. Uh, I mean, yeah. if we're really arrogant to think that the world resolves around South Africa, we're making a mistake. It does certainly not. <laughs> so, <laughs> if the if a recession is going to happen, it's going to be a, a worldwide mm. thing, and then South Africa is obviously influenced. Um, but it's not South Africa that's going to go into a recession uh, just because we're thinking we're slightly unique and beautiful. Mm. I mean, we can't do that on our own. No, we're that's strong. We're not that powerful. Um, and then the world goes into a recession, which means everything is influenced. But like I said, they don't like being there. The world doesn't like being no, there. No, no. Major, major economies like um, uh, um, um, you know, Europe mm. um, and, and the Americas and China and Russians, they don't like being mm. in the bag. I mean, Russia is a very good example of it. You know, let's isolate them and see what happens. Mm. Mm. They're doing fine. No, exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Their currency is stronger than it's ever been. Mm. Mm. So you must ask these questions. But I mean, yeah, I think, mm. I think in the end, the property industry 
effectively influences just about everything in everybody's lives. I mean, it's, mm. it still remains the biggest expense out of your bank account. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what you do. Mm. I mean, you have to live somewhere. Mm. And I can't see that you live anywhere else mm. than a house for well, the foreseeable future. Well, that's a problem. I mean, I mean, I mean looking they, get, at... they get a little smaller yeah. um, yes. as time goes by. I mean, if you if you look at look at places like the Netherlands, like Amsterdam and mm. those places, really really tiny homes mm. are really really expensive. So I think in South Africa we're also seeing a densification mm. of of real estate. Uh, we can get a lot more out of land than what what we've had, seen in the past. I mean, um, if you look at major companies in South Africa and in the development sector, I'm not going to call too many names out now. Mm. But I'm going to do free marketing for them. That's a bit unfair. No, that's okay. <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's give me a mandate first. <laughs> now, I, I, now, when we talk about densification, we, at the moment, if we're looking at City of Cape Town, for example, yes. we can see that the city wants densification. It mm. wants to see more out of a piece of land. Mm. So we're looking at bigger apartment blocks. They're going higher at the moment. If you know, if, if look at the central uh, parts of Cape Town at the moment, you know, the CBD itself, this is severe high rises going up. There. It's just kind of building and building. And, and it's going higher and higher mm -hmm. and higher. Uh, and, and for the first time in, 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 in history, they're building uh, apartment blocks without um, making provision for parking, for example. Everything's yes. changing. It's like, where do I, I park my bicycle? Well, they're relying on their metro systems. Now, for, for the first time, City of Cape Town has got this ability. It's amazing. Uh, with, their, with their bus um, metro system, to actually transport people Finally, without yeah. having cars. I mean, this sounds very Europe-like, doesn't it? It does. It does sound very Europe-like. I mean, I hope that that continues to to grow and to yeah. just get more advanced. If you are looking, and I don't want to touch on your, your topic because thanks for speaking on the 22nd of March, um, where there is, if we look at unemployment and a lot of people, I think, are feeling a little bit lost if you are looking at becoming go into your field. What do you think, and not touching too much, because I want to film you on that day, but looking at that, and uh, I think some people are lost, which I don't blame them, but what hope is there in terms of, oh, let me look at this as an yeah. option shortly, so I, we don't touch too much I, on the 22nd. For me, the, I mean, I was a banker and I originated and I studied law and those things. I think mine was a preparation for whatever came. Mm. Um, many times, I mean, we end up and we start studying things, doing careers that we fundamentally end up doing something very, very different. Interesting. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, is it is it is it possible to go into the real estate industry and make a success? I have seen people fundamentally change their lives mm. um, uh, from from really being down and out mm. and joining the industry doing the necessary training and learning um, and fundamentally change their lives for the better. I think it's also order, you know, you get some kind of order in your life and you get some kind of... Yeah, it does. And there's where perseverance comes in because you've done it for a number of years and now you're opening, you, you're a principal of a company and you're opening a franchise. So with you, it's a kind of intelligence. You also are a mentor and you're a leader. Uh, I, think, I would say I think that's the, I mm. think that's, you know, we've seen a lot of people that open in real estate companies um, mm. and fundamentally fail um, as owners. Mm. But there's a major difference between being an owner and being a leader in our industry. I, I think, I think if, if you, if you do anything in life, mm. uh, albeit you become a teacher or a legal practitioner, or you become a doctor, Whatever you come in life, you strive to be the simply the best in it. Mm. You can only do that through knowledge and learning. No, yeah, so absolutely. mine has been a consistent endeavor to make sure that I have got the most knowledge, mm. and and that is an inherently becomes uh, a leader of walking in front, and people follow mm. the right way. Uh, um, you have to be the best property practitioner. You have to commit. And I like the fact that you um, say knowledge because um, you can't just, you know, well, you can't be a leader. Like, no, you know, you, can't, I'm going. you, you mm. can't be a leader if you're not the best in your own trade. I mean, mm. I mean, if you, if you want to own a company and you want to lead the way, then be the best. 
Mm. And, and it, it's terrifying sometimes when people talk about subjects. I always, I always laugh about our industry. Uh, let's become a coach. Mm. I was this brilliant estate agent. Uh, so I started a coaching career in it. Um, you know, why? <laughs> if you're doing well, why did you go on a coach? No, absolutely. Um, I just want to check if the sound is okay. Sorry, there's somebody grassing there. Thanks, JP. We'll, JP's great yeah. film. Yes, sorry to continue. So I think, I think, uh, did we have to cut there or we go on? No, that's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> so people have to mow the lawn. They <laughs> have to mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> It's part of the trade. <laughs> Believe me, I've mowed a few lawns. Have you? Life. Good to know. <laughs> and I, I, I believe that if you, let's say you're a doctor, mm. you can't be half a doctor. You have to be the best doctor. Mm. And then you often very much specialize and then open a practice, perhaps even employ other doctors. Mm. Now, if you're half a doctor, you're never going to do that. Mm. You know, and you're probably going to not be a doctor very long. And I think if in a professional career, you have to be the best in knowledge and in skills um, if you want to be a, a owner perhaps but more a leader mm. uh, i mean i will never stop selling real estate in my life no uh, even if i have 50 branches of my mm. company mm. Uh, it still remains who i am and what i want to do and what i love part to of do. your identity and what you uh, love to do and That's once great. you kind of exit that environment you know Ooh. stop doing it yourself what do you become then are you staying with the times? Are you understanding how it's going to change in the future? Do you understand market circumstances correctly? Mm. Um, and that kind of thing. So I think it's also a thing of staying in touch. Mm. I mean, we just talked about cycles a lot now. Yes. You know, how things change. If you sit in some high tower and mm. thinking you're brilliant, um, well, there are people that do that. Uh, and Correct. they get a lot of advice. Some of them them. work, you know. Some people buy companies that shouldn't be buying. I mm. mean, there's a lot of um, social media companies that just got owned by people that shouldn't be owning it. No, absolutely. If I'm, if I'm referring mm. to the Americas at the moment, yeah. I'm not going to use some words. Mm. I mean, they shouldn't be owning those companies. They're sitting in towers making decisions about things that they're actually not in touch with, um, which is wrong. It's like me telling everybody that I'm a social media specialist. Really? Uh, I can't be. Oh, yeah, because I have a job. I love it. <laughs> Thank goodness I've got a second opportunity because of career. Uh, <laughs> you think it's an option for me? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, I, I, well, I do a lot of social media, but I, I'm, I'm definitely not on the level that a Hanley Barnard could be, for example. I mean, mm. That's not my, my functionality. But I think what you're talking about is, is really specializing. It's interesting, we had that in a previous interview. How important is to equip yourself, be knowledgeable and, you know, be specific Absolutely. really with what your goal is Absolutely. and what you want to achieve. I think if you, you know, it's like being, a, I'm going to use the example of a legal practitioner or mm. a doctor. I mean, should you be doing social media as a doctor? No. Well, well I mean, um, you shouldn't be. I don't think you should. I mean, I just did it. Great surgeon uh, transplant yeah. and got paid. No. I mean, that's the same as property pr practitioners don't do that. Mm. They mm. sell something and then they say, I sold it. Well, you know what? Tell it's me your job. job. It's your job. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's great. Um, yeah. I, I hate the bragging environment, though, that, mm. that, 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 uh, that many industries use. I, I think success should become, as you're a professional, it should speak for itself. Great for the industry, um, that I but I mean, you you have to be a specialist these days. Yes, you can't absolutely. be you can't be everything. You can't be. I mean, if you look at our industry, mm. um, uh, as property practitioners, we do a property transaction. It's immediately influencing so many other other industries. How we yes. got to sell the thing in the first place was because of media companies. Mm. I mean, but I that's mean, a media company. That's yeah, not that's you. doing their job. You are specifically um, focusing on your knowledge in I your use specific those companies field. to get the functionality and the things done. Yes. Uh, and then when the property transaction happens, I go to a, a conveyancer, mm. which is an attorney, and then he does the transfer. Somebody that's specialized in, in certificates of compliance need to do those inspections. Mm. A moving company does the moving. I'm not doing the moving. No. So, so, I mean, and the bond originator does the home mm. loan. And the bank does their job. Yes, absolutely. So everybody does their job right. Um, I mean, you can't be all of it. I mean, there was a, a at one point in in, in, the, in the property trade, uh, property practitioners were were, um, were 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 trying to influence that they can do the transfers themselves. 
Just oh, imagine that. That's a tough Just one. imagine that mm. for a moment. That's um, complexity right there. Mm. I think, yeah, let's let's leave the legal side to the legal guys and the you have to. and the marketing mm. and, and and service side to the real estate. But it's the similar thing that uh, that many attorneys think mm. that they can own. Um, a real estate companies it's also a fundamental mistake but if you say you you, you love people it's a people industry how the, the people that work with you i would say do you look at them each with their own set of skills as an individual and where their strengths lie how do you manage that team of often i'm sure that it must be kind of extremely diverse interesting and yes, um, diverse as an owner we, we kind of strive to get diverse people in there strangely enough because mm. i mean um, I I wouldn't be servicing the same public as one of my colleagues mm. because they might be very different in personality. They they might uh, have a, a different following of yes, friends and influence mm. a, a circle of people that they influence. Mm. So I mean, very most often in in a real estate company, you've got extremely diverse people. Mm. I, I think in a leadership role, you have to have a certain many many years of experience in management. Mm be able to handle that. Mm. Um, uh, I think being an owner is a fundamental difference from being mm. a, a practitioner mm. um, uh, because you've got so much diverse factors. And it's always not the prettiest place to be in because you in you un, 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 don't often end up with the good stuff. You end up with exactly. bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a very complicated role being an owner mm. of a real estate company. It's a, these are very complex transactions like I mentioned. Uh, complex people mm. and people in general are, uh, are, uh, with their complexities make it a com compl uh, complex. complex transaction. Mm. Um, um, so I think if, you, if you're in a leadership role uh, it's more towards uh, years of experience mm. um, and, and having uh, obviously obtained those skills um, Absolutely. either through formal mm. learning or Experience, experience, experiential learning. If you are looking at becoming an agent and there's, you know, somebody's watching and they're going, oh, I have a bit of a problem. I need to make a decision. I'm going to be an agent. There's so many companies out there and um, it seems like a bit of a mountain, I suppose, with the amount of agents that there are. What is the one piece of advice you can give regardless of the fact that often people say the market is saturated. There's so many agents and what makes you a success, do you think, coming in with quite a bit of people uh, doing this kind of job? Uh, if you look at entering any industry, mm. including the property industry, uh, I think you need to do your homework properly. I mean, mm. You can rather consult somebody and go sit with somebody. Very often, um, some, the, the property practitioners, regulatory authority, the PPRA, mm. um, website's got a lot of information of is it actually a, a career option? Right. There's enough reading about it on the, mm. on, on the internet. But I mean, in the end, there is a diverse amount of companies out there and every color that you can think of mm. in the rainbow gets represented in the companies. It was, um, um, but I think in the end, you need to go and see every one of them, mm. understand their offering, mm. understand where your future lies mm. with them. Um, understand what learning they're going to give you. Mm. Um, it's one thing giving, getting formal training, you know, doing because the, the career path is yes. that you do a logbook, you do your formal diploma in QF4 as a property practitioner, and then you write a, profit, uh, a, a professional designated exam, mm. um, and then you become a, a full status property practitioner. That's formal learning, mm. but it's more towards you know, what can I learn at the company? Mm. What are they going to do for me to make me successful? Because many of these real estate agencies are mere employment companies. They employ, right. uh, drop you down in a seat and mm. keep a phone in your hand. You're and going, say, what oh. now? What do I do? Um, mm. And that's horrifying to hear. It still happens every day. Um, it's a, what they call, may I use the word bums on seats model? Yes. Um, which is horrifying because mm. effectively they're putting... They, they're taking time away from that individual mm. because they're probably being set up for failure. Mm. Um, so it needs to be a company where the leadership and the management is investing mm. truly 
into a daily activity of making yes, those. Yes, I think there's enough countries and uh, enough companies in South Africa where you can go to and choose the one yeah. that relates to you. I mean, in my most. company, for example, yeah. I um, every every um, candidate that estate agent, that's what we call new estate agents, um, are assigned to a mentor, which is a full estate agent, and they they follow them, learn from them daily basis, mm. what we call shadowing. Mm. Um, beyond the formal well, the training that I provide them, um, which is intense. And you, you provide intensive training because yes. I suppose you want your agents to be as knowledgeable as possible. I think possible. it's a responsibility. I do, um, of both, of the the person that works with you yeah, and you I think, I think mm. just employing people and stealing their life and time. That is what the thing is. Yeah, it is. Mm. Um, and I can't even imagine that you would want to do that. Yes. Um, my interview process is a little bit longer because it's very often that people have talent and the abilities mm. and it's just the mere knowledge that, they, that mm. they need to gain and that can be taught. That can be taught. Mm. Um, but they have to have the talent and the mm. abilities at least to be able to, to, to go into a trade. Um, but I mean, I've seen people start out and do really well in the very first months. Mm. Of, um, of their career and that happens often. Yes, um, I like the fact that you say it's a people's industry. I suppose loving people is a prerequisite. Oh, it is a it must. Is because that's what you do, you love people, you love... Yeah, it doesn't start with property because mm. I mean everybody is in one, isn't it? Everybody is in one, mm. the renting one or, or their own one. So everybody's in one. Yes. Um, so everybody's our client. Yes. Mm, the ability to interact with people and love people is the right way. Mm, mm. Um, you got to find the property anyway because mm. they live in one. Mm. Um, and if it's either going to be today that they need to make decisions on it, or in a few years, as long as you know enough people, mm -hmm. it should be fine. Mm. Um, so there is definitely hope in this and um, in this industry. For, it's never going to go away. You know, it's not going to go away for agents and for for. People that want to buy and as long as time will go on, people need to live in houses mm -hmm. and they want to own them, they want to sell them and buy them. Um, people, <laughs> life is a weird place. Mm -hmm. You start out without owning anything, then you work very, very, very hard to own one, which is usually a little one, small one to small start one. with, and then you kind of escalate the level mm -hmm. uh, and you you get a bigger one and mm. a better one and a better suburb yes, and as your career exactly. goes on until you get to that level where you've got the right one mm. and then the children leave the house and you say what okay. am i sitting with this major house now and you think oh that went well <laughs> Uh, so then you downscale again slowly. <laughs> downscaling, <laughs> so, downscaling. So in my life, I have I've I've walked that path mm. with people, which is what which is one of my most rewarding things in my life. Mm. Is um, you start with mm. them, and you walk this path with them, mm. and you do multiple transactions for them, and then they move backwards again, right, to right. a smaller one, mm. until inevitably we all end up with nothing anyway, because we're not all going to be around forever. Forever, exactly. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it, it is true that I've walked, and it's, and it's, I think it's one of the most biggest mm. satisfactions that you can get is walking a path with a client mm. through their lifespan um, uh, as, they, as they go on that journey. Mm. Uh, but it is horrible to think that exactly the time when you own the right one, Everybody leaves. Yeah, great. <laughs> then, you saw, then you can sell it. So that's a great thing. And then the topic that you're going to touch on, and we're going to um, get back to you and, 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 and film that as well. So I'm very excited about your talk on the 22nd. What topic will you be focusing on? And I think it's important, you know, because I'm really interested in mentorship and really equipping people with the knowledge, especially now where we're sitting. Um, and what will you be chatting about at Crystal Beach on the 22nd? Um, the real estate industry, is it a real option? Right. Is it a real option for somebody? Is it a Important. career path that you can follow? Is it viable mm -hmm. in terms of that? Is it something that, that, that could work for you as an individual? Um, uh, you know, we, we often talk about these careers and we talk about career options and mm. the things that we can do and can't do. But in the end, it, it's about the individual. Um, and it's he or she's personality, yeah. the abilities and talents, and we're all very unique. Mm -hmm. um, it is an ex it 
is a topic that is applicable because the real estate op industry should be seen as an option. Mm. Uh, it is a professional environment by professionals. Mm. Um, and it should be in, in that same category as any career option that you might consider. Absolutely. Um, so, so I think that's what the talk's going to be about. You know, is there a real option for somebody? Yes, people I think want to see. They want to go, is there an option for me when I've lost something or, or could I gain something sure. out, of this, uh, out of this industry? And um, are you excited about this year? Absolutely, um, yes, and terrified. Um, <laughs> I think, um, mm. you know, as a real estate agent, I was in COVID, um, which is probably the worst thing you can do to a real estate agent. Put I mean, let's a... lock you up for a few months. Do you, you can't see, see you people, mm. uh, you're not allowed to talk to people, you're not mm. allowed to do anything out there, which is really what we fundamentally do every day. Um, which was a terrifying time yes. for me and the impact that it left on the property industry was, was fundamental mm. and then months and months after that we couldn't register properties um, um, you know because of the deeds office backlogs mm. and so forth mm. so I think if we could survive COVID and the times yes. are going we're probably going to survive anything um, I think the property industry as it goes in this next cycle will change mm. um, and we, we're in Cape Town which is mm. a little different from mm. Anywhere else in the country, I think. I mean, um, there's a massive immigration uh, towards the Western Cape um, from everywhere in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot different um, from 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 other provinces. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the cycle will change. Interest rates are going to go higher. It's clear that there's another interest rate hike coming end of January. I hope it's limited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but I mean, interest rates will not stop um, for the time being. Mm. Whilst we've got inflationary pressures, we've got a lot of inflationary pressures. Uh, I mean, um, which which is definitely going to keep on influencing us. And the only, like I said, the only way that the Reserve Bank can control that is with interest rates. Um, so this next cycle is going to be a challenge. It'll be interesting. It'll be a challenging. I, I you know, I started mm. selling real estate in the in the recession. That's when I started selling real estate. So I think. Um, you know, somebody asked me the other day, why would you do that? But why would you do that? Oh, because everybody didn't. <laughs> because everyone didn't. <laughs> Warren Little Buffett always say you sell when, when nobody else is selling and you buy when nobody else is buying. Exactly. Well, exactly. that's exactly the same thing. Interesting. That's why I keep on saying don't leave South Africa. Mm. I mean, that's exactly the opposite you to do. Mm. I mean, if everybody's leaving, there's so much more. You'll be the only estate agent left, left in South Africa. <laughs> What a market! Are you going to sell too? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but exactly. Um, Tell you what, I'm going to charge a lot of commission. Because... <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's the alternative route. And what I like about what she's saying is, this is a situation. It is happening. You can't sit in a no, in a no, corner. no. I mean, that's the last thing you can you, do. You have to kind of you, have this resilience. That's when you pull up your sleeves and you really get down to it. Mm. I mean, what I do like about my industry. Mm is the more that I give it, the more it rewards. I mean, See. it's something that many industries can't give you. I mean, uh, if you work 20 hours, you're still going to get the same paycheck. Uh, mine, if you work 20 hours, you're going to get paid a lot because you're going to do really, really if well. If you really commit, focus commit. and commit. Consistency yes. and discipline. You know, if you're consistent, um, eventually well, like it does in anything in life, isn't it? Mm. It's any career path that you would mm. follow, I think consistency and discipline and the knowledge will make anybody mm. successful in any career. Mm. Money really gets, you get paid well when you do that. Yes. When you really commit. Um, it's one of those sectors that you you can earn a lot of money mm. if, you, if you're good at it and you, and you, you work hard at mm. it and it, it really rewards. Like I said, I've, I know so many people where it's fundamentally changed their lives, mm. you know. Mm. Um, I have seen from divorcees to people that grew up very poor, mm. people just leaving school um, without any options and then actually made an incredible success. Yeah. And the, and, but the interesting thing is that it's not about only a real estate agent, the property uh, 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 industry has got huge opportunities in yeah. general. I mean, if we look at, if we if we look at the career path, mm. I was just mentioning that your formal qualification that you use NQF four, but you can do an NQF twelve. Right. You can have your doctorate. 
There you go. As a property practitioner. So you can do your degree. You can have a you can do mm. you can become a professor in it. Mm. Um, so that's just in the formal side of education, you can do that. Uh, if you look at the industry itself, it's got operations and admin positions mm. that always need we always need staff to do those functions. Mm. From receptionists to operations managers, um, the industry influences so many other industries, like the legal industry, where where there's conveyances that have to do the transfers, and they employ mm. administrative people and paralegals mm. and all those people. Um, it's the, interesting. It's making you employable. It's a segment market. It's a, a great yes. pillar to look at. You know, perhaps you sitting at home going, there is, I think it is a it's fascinating not a, business. It's not only a sales agent. And it's not a sales. I mean, that is the thing. It could so be a rental agent. It could be a rental agent. job is fundamentally different. Absolutely. So there's a large umbrella then. And and it could be a, a managing agent, for example. Mm. something very different. Mm. A managing agent is one that manages body corporates and homeowners associations of estates and blocks of flats. Mm. So they manage that levy. Yes. That's their job. They manage the block, mm. um, um, and, and so, which is as administrative functions, mm. and they get paid well. Right. Um, so they, there's a great scope and an opportunity. There's a lot of scope, and it's not that. only the sales agents that are in this industry. You see, and I think people immediately kind of make uh, that conclusion. I think the, uh, uh, the role. I mean, I I am not a good rental agent. Uh, He's not a I, good I, 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 I employ good rental agents. That's the thing. It. It's not your um, speciality or what no, you want to do. No. I, I've got all the knowledge to do it, mm. but I probably don't have that level of patience that you have to mm. have. I mean, and I don't like being called at one o'clock in the morning because the pipe burst. Yes. Um, rental agents like that. I love this one rental agent of mine. She's probably one of the best in the industry. Mm. So you see, sales agents are, uh, uh, have affairs and rental agents have marriages. Yes. So as agents move on, <laughs> and rental agents stay a very long time with their clients. A very long time, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's fascinating um, to see that. But yeah, I mean, in, in general, the property industry has got a lot of options. Mm. It's not only about uh, property sales, mm. and it and it shouldn't be seen as that. It's a it's a it's an influencing industry. Mm. Uh, if you if you think about the things that happen around it, mm. one single house that sells. It's got cleaning companies, it's got legal companies, it's got uh, compliance companies, electricians, plumbers, um, gas people. Mm. It's all, all um, teams around people, with, with something. Um, mm. You know, there's so much industry, uh, uh, construction industry is mm. influenced by it near daily basis. I mean, mm. um, no, definitely. Um, the builders of trade, renovations, and all those things are influenced by it. Mm. Um, but I mean, so, so, but as a, if you go into the industry and you gain the knowledge, then mm. the options start opening. That's it. Um, and many times people um, start in a sales career but end up in an operations mm. position because they find out that they prefer that mm. side of it, um, which is a complex side of it. I mean, the operation Imagine. side of a real estate state agency, it's not only to get the transaction done, it's to fulfill what is promised in that transaction. Yes. It's yes. often the major challenges, you know, when should people move, when they move, what happens. So there's quite a lot of scopes within, within that, that industry, which, which yes. I, I find fascinating. And I think it's going to give people a lot of opportunity in the future and taking things in your own hands. So if you are in that position, there is certainly hope in, in your industry. Definitely. I think um, people should look at it, mm, study it, yes. ask for opinions on it. Mm. Uh, gain the right knowledge before yes. you make a decision on anything in life. Mm. Anyway, I think that's important. I mean, you can't just there you uh, go. jump into something. Yes. Um, um, and then once you, uh, once you, uh, if you make a decision, make sure that you've looked at the different options that mm. uh, that these different companies offer. Mm. Uh, make sure that they committed to your career as far as they should be, mm. uh, and not only you just jumping in because um, because they make uh, promises. Absolutely, um, we'll put your 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 company uh, property .co's at the bottom. So if you have questions, maybe people can email you because I think it's important. And um, I want to thank you for for employing, making people's lives possible, making a difference. And I think that is important for the leaders and the mentors in the world to 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 do that and to activate um, a future where absolutely. people have hope and. Regardless of what is happening, and we should always have hope. And we should always help people. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, we're not getting out of here. Uh, the legacy is getting out. 
<laughs> or getting out of here. Yeah, getting out of here. Okay, like, no. But uh, yes, exactly. At the end of the day, the legacy that you leave is not the money that you made, it's how you influence mm-hmm. people's lives. Mm-hmm. And that's what you fundamentally leave behind. Um, you don't leave anything else behind. Yes. That, that, gets, that gets dished out to everybody else mm-hmm. afterwards. But yes. what you leave behind is what you, what you, how you change people's lives mm-hmm. in a positive, how much you cared. Mm-hmm. It's not how much money you made. Thank you very much, Hanbury. Thank you, Annie Barnum. I really, really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I look forward to your talk on the 22nd. We will be filming that. And that was Insights with Hanley Barnard with the incredible Hein Burden Cup. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>